couple years into my wood project building, I really wanted to challenge myself on the types of projects that I was going to build. One of the areas that I, wanted to, area that I looked into was using rough sawn lumber instead of the dimensional wood that you would get from the home centers. Rough sawn lumber gives you a little more flexibility in the sizes of boards that you can make. Uh, it's also a little bit cheaper than those other boards that you can get at, uh, at the home centers. So as we're getting into that, there's a couple things that I want to take note of if you're using rough sawn lumber. Uh, the first is you are going to have a uh, kind of live edge on this uh, edge here and then some imperfections that you're going to want to get rid of. So here now I do want to show you a couple cuts that we're going to be making and how to line up this edge to give you a nice board to reference, uh, to reference all your cuts from. The first cut that I want to show you will be squaring up the front edge of this board in a similar way that a jointer would. I set my material on a piece of MDF. I'm going to use that as a sacrificial surface that I can cut into. Uh, as you can tell, I've kind of painted on it, so uh, it will be a replaceable item for me. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab our track and we're going to place it on the board so that our cut line uh, is back far enough to remove all of those imperfections. My biggest piece here is going to be this piece of live edge, and so I'm going to butt my, the edge of that chip strip straight to the edge of that live edge there. I want to get my track fairly straight so I can use the maximum width of this board. Now I'm all set to make the cut. Place my track saw on, oh, adjust it a little bit to make sure that I'm still in line. And now I'm going to start up my saw and make my cut. So I've removed that material, and now I have a reference edge, nice clean cut that I can make all my cuts from. Now the next cut that I'm gonna make uh, is going to be my six inch board. So I'm going to measure six inches and make a mark, making sure that my tape measure is straight when I make that mark. And now I have two reference edges, or two reference marks to place my track directly over those marks and finish off my cut. With that, I'll have a six inch piece of wood that I can put to any project. If I have multiple boards that I wanna cut, there's a couple accessories that come with the track saw that you can purchase with the track saw, like the rip guides. What we're going to do is you would set up your dimension uh, at whatever you're looking at, say three inches here. It's going to slide into place. And now you can adjust the dimension and make sure that your board is going to butt up against that rail and be able to cut repeated dimensions at three inches every time I make that cut. Another great use for a track saw is to square up large panel product. So the sheet of plywood that I have here is left over from a different project that uh, may not be as square as it was when I originally bought it. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to check that. How we check that is going to be taking di diagonal measurements from each angle and making sure that they're the same measurement. If they're off, that's gonna tell us that our plywood sheet is at a square. So we're gonna go from one end to the other, and I'm at 63 and a half. I'm gonna take that same measurement on the other diagonal, and I'm at 63 and a quarter. So I know that I'm off. Well, there's an easy way to fix that when you're using a track saw. You need a 12 inch speed square, and then we have our track here that we're going to line up to our straight cut. This is the edge that I want to square up and then I'm gonna go and square up the other side after this cut is complete. I'm going to use the 12 inch square as a reference guide, so I'm going to slide that over, make sure it's flush against the back side of my square, or back side of my plywood, and then place my track against the edge of my speed square, making sure that there are no gaps along the edge. Now, this edge that I'm going to be cutting will be nice and square with this back edge here that I'm referencing from. We can go ahead and make that cut. Now when I remove my track, this edge will be square with the rest of my board. We take a look at that measurement again. 61 and 7 eighths. 
and 61 and 7 eighths. Now, I do need to cut this to size. So I've got my square edge right here, one that I referenced off of, and one that I just cut. Now it is simple as drawing to my line, pencil again, and marking at 24 inches. Coming out here, marking at 24 inches. And now I can lay the track along those two lines, or the two marks that I just made, and I have a perfectly square 24 inch board. There are a couple upgrades, uh, very similar to the rip stops or the repetitive stops that we just looked at. It's going to be uh, small attachments that will actually do the measuring for you. So you would lock down your item or your tape measures at 24 inches, lock that down, and when that hooks to your track, that gives you a nice repeated cross cut that you can make in plywood, making sure that you're at 24 inches with each cut. So now that I've set up my parallel guides, I wanna show you how to make a couple of those cuts. My reference edge uh, that I just cut is over here, so I'm going to set my track over on that side. But since I'm cutting on this side of the board, I'm actually going to rotate this all the way around so that I'm using my reference edge to cut from. I'm going to take my track, I'm gonna measure out 24 inches and lock that into place. Take my other one, measure it out at 24 inches Lock that into place, and I'll set up my track by getting the edge of the tape measures in, and now I'm set up ready for my cut. And now here's my 24 inch piece. If I wanted to make another one, I do the same thing, placing my track directly onto my next board. 